Question number 6, part A. Sketch the curve with the equation y equals minus k upon x where k greater than 0 and x is not equal to 0. The question carries two marks. Okay, here they want you to sketch y, the reciprocal graph y equals minus k upon x where k is a positive number. So we start from the basic reciprocal graph 1 upon x. This is our graph. The graph consists of two separate graphs in the first and third quadrants. That's our y is equal to 1 upon x. Now, uh, don't worry about this negative sign first. How about k upon x? k is a positive number. So when you, when you sketch, uh, let's say, 2 upon x, the graph will be little away from the origin, 3 upon x, 4 upon x, but we don't know the value of k. So maybe we can consider the same graph as k upon x. All we know is k is a positive number. So the k upon x is the same as this. Not really, not really the same graph. Actually, it's supposed to be a bit away from origin, but we don't know the value of k. All we know is k is a positive number. So we take this graph as k upon x. Now, when they say minus k upon x, when you have a function f of x, the graph for this function f of x, and when you want to sketch minus f of x, you take this f of x, flip it over x axis. That's your minus f of x. So for this minus k upon x, you take k upon x, flip the graph. It's a reflection over x axis. So this part must be coming here. And then this part must go up. That's your y is equal to minus k upon x. But k is supposed to be a positive number because if k is negative, it will become minus into minus plus, which is same as k upon x. So this is our graph y is equal to minus k upon x. Part B, on a separate diagram, sketch the curve with the equation y equals minus k upon x plus k, where k greater than 0 and x not equal to 0. Stating the coordinates of the point of intersection with the x-axis in terms of and in terms of k, the equation of the horizontal asymptote. The question carries three marks. Part B, they want you to sketch y is equal to minus k upon x plus k, again k is a positive number. We already got this graph from part A, minus k upon x. Now we are going to add a constant to the function. When you add a constant to the function, we take this uh, minus k upon x as f of x. So when you add a constant, in P1, in chapter 4, graphs and transformation, we learn when you add a constant to the function, the graph will move up k units if k is positive. If it is negative, it will go down k units. But we don't know the value of k. It can be a fraction, 1 by 2, 1 by 4, 1 or 5, we don't know. But all we know it's a positive number. So let's say our k is here. We don't know the value, don't worry about it. Let's say our k is here. Just draw a line here. This is y is equal to k. Now, since they want you to sketch f of x plus k, we are going to move this f of x, which is minus k upon x, to upwards k units. So what will happen, this graph will be here, the y is equal to k will be asymptote. And then this section, this segment will go up again. That's it. This is our graph y is equal to minus k upon x plus k. But they want you to find the point of intersection with the coordinate axis. This graph will not touch the y axis because y axis is also an asymptote for this graph. And if they ask you to find uh, write the equation of the asymptotes, you have one horizontal asymptote y is equal to k and the vertical one x is equal to 0. That's the equation of y axis. But how about this point of intersection with the x-axis? When you want to find the point of intersection with the x-axis, 
replace y by 0 in the function. So when you put y is equal to 0, your minus k upon x is equal to 30 plus k. Now find the x value that will be the x coordinate of the this point. So when you bring this here, k upon x is equal to k. So x will be 1 because k upon 1 is k. So this point is 1 comma 0. That's it. Mention the point. Let's say the graph when you apply translation to right side or left side when the graph crosses y axis you need to replace x by 0. So you need to replace x by 0 to find the uh, y coordinate. So let's say for example they want you to sketch y is equal to minus k upon x plus 2. We have the, we have the actual function here minus k upon x and when you replace x by x plus 2 you get this function x by x plus 2. So we know that in a function when we replace x by x plus a the graph will be shifted to left side a units. So when you shift the graph to left side a units it will intercept the y axis. So when you replace x by 0 you can get the y coordinate in terms of k. Part c Find the range of possible values of k for which the equation y equals minus k upon x plus k does not touch or intersect the line with the equation y equals 3x plus 4. The question carries 5 marks. In part c, you are given another straight line and it's mentioned that this straight line does not cross or touch the curve. So they want you to find the range of possible values of k. So whenever we talk about a point of intersection of a straight line on the curve, we need to equate them first. So it will be minus k upon x plus k is equal to 3x plus 4. And try to rearrange and try to form a, a quadratic equation. So when you multiply everything by x, it will be minus k plus kx equals 3x square plus 4x and try to put everything to one side of the equation. So you will get 3x squared, kx goes to the other side minus kx. So it will be 4 minus k, take x as a common factor. And minus k goes there, becomes plus k equals 0. And we got a quadratic equation in x. So there are three cases in chapter 2, if I'm not wrong, 2 or 3. We learned like, when a line does not touch the curve, if you have a quadratic, if you can form a quadratic equation and take the discriminant b square minus 4ac, it will be less than 0 if the line does not touch or passes through the curve. If it touches, if the line is tangent, the b square minus 4ac equals 0. If the line crosses the curve at two points, put it as b square minus 4ac greater than 0. So in this particular case, we are going to take b square minus 4ac less than 0. So our b is this. So b square minus 4a. a is our coefficient of x square. c is the constant term. Less than 0. And solve this quadratic inequality, you got the, you will get the range of possible values of k. So when you expand this, 16 minus 8k plus k square minus 12k less than 0. So k square minus 20k plus 16 less than 0. And try to find the two k values from there we can find the we can solve this uh, quadratic inequality. So my two values are k is equal to 10 plus 2 root 21 and k is 10 minus 2 square root of 21. Now we got two values and we are going to solve this quadratic inequality. So you need to know which one is a smaller number. Apparently this will be less than, uh, this will be the smaller number. This will be 10 plus something. So it will be a bigger number. So the solution for this quadratic inequality will be the smaller number 10 minus 2 root of 21 less than k less than the bigger number.
So this will be the range of possible values for k. Question number 7. f of x is equal to 2x minus 3 root x minus 5 where x greater than 0. Part A, solve the equation f of x is equal to 9. The question carries 4 marks. Question number 7, part A, they want you to solve f of x is equal to 9. So this function 2x minus 3x to the power of half minus 5 equals 9. So put this 9 here, it will become 2x minus 3x to the power half minus 14 equals 0. So how do we solve this? It's not a quadratic equation. So if you go through chapter 2 functions, the ex in exercise 2e, you can, you can see a lot of questions in this type. We need to convert this equation into a quadratic equation first. How do we convert it? Take this x to the power half as y and check whether this is y square. Apparently, when you square this, x is equal to y square. So when you substitute here, this will become 2y square minus 3y minus 14 equals 0. So now it's easy for us to solve this quadratic equation. So you will get 2y values and then replace y by x to the power half and solve for x again. So that's how whenever you come across this type of questions, right? This is how we solve them. We convert them to a quadratic equation first and solve for y, replace y by x to the power half in this particular case. So we got two values, 7 upon 2 and minus 2. So these two values are the solutions for this particular equation. Now we are going to replace y by x to the power half. So x to the power half is equal to 7 upon 2. So x will be square this 49 upon 4. That's our one value. And x to the power half is equal to minus 2. If you square this and write it as uh, 4, for example, let's say I square both sides. So x is equal to minus 2 whole square is 4. And this looks like an another solution. But when you substitute x is equal to 4 and check whether we get 0, you can substitute this also and check. When you substitute this, so it will become 2 times 2 times 49 upon 4 minus 3 into square root of 49 upon 4. Take it as a, because x is positive. So it's given there x is positive. So it will be 7 upon 2 and then minus 14. Check whether you get 0 when you simplify this. This will be 49 upon 2 minus 21 upon 2 minus 14, which is 49 upon 2 minus 28, 49 upon 2, which is 0. So we know for sure this is the solution of this equation. How about x is equal to 4? When we substitute x is equal to 4 here, 2 4s are 8 minus 3 square root of 4 is 2, so 6 minus 14, which is 8 minus 20 is not 0. Why is that happening? We are supposed to get 0 when we substitute x is equal to 4 in here. That's happening because if you look at this equation, x to the power minus half is minus 2. When you square root a real number, you are supposed to get plus or minus. You won't strictly get a negative number. So you can't just take square on both sides and take x is equal to 4 as a solution that's wrong. So you can just neglect this because square root of a negative number won't be strictly a negative number. I have explained this clearly in Jan 2020 Pure Math 1 video. If you go to question number 5, you will come across a similar situation where we neglect a negative number, a negative solution. Part B, solve the equation f double dash of x equals 6. The question got 5 marks. And part B, f double dash of x is equal to 6. They want you to solve this equation. Before I proceed, this question is exactly same as the Jan 2019 question number 6. If you go to the particular video, January 12, 2019 paper, and look for question number 6, which is exactly same as uh, this question. 
So f double dash of double prime of x, we need to differentiate this twice. So when you differentiate it once, f dash of x is 2, x becomes 1, minus 3x to the power half, when you differentiate half x to the power half minus 1, phi becomes 0. So this will become 2 minus 3 by 2, 3 by 2, x to the power minus half. And differentiate this again, differentiate this again, f double prime of x, 2 becomes 0, minus 3 by 2, minus half x to the power minus half minus 1, which is 3 by 4 minus into minus plus x to the power minus 3 by 2. Now we need to equate this to 6 and find the x value. So when we equate this to 6, 3 upon 4 x to the power minus 3 by 2 equals 6. And then make x as a subject. So bring the 4 and 3 here, x to the power minus 3 by 2. Or you can write it as 1 upon x to the power positive 3 by 2. It is 6 times 4 by 3, which is 8. So 1 upon x to the power 3 by 2 is equal to 8. You swap them, so you will get 1 upon 8 is equal to x to the power 3 by 2. So x will be 1 upon 8 to the power 2 by 3. You raise 2 by 3 on both sides, this will become x to the power 1, this will become x to the power 2 by 3. So 1 to the power 2 by 3 is 1. 8 to the power 2 by 3 is uh, 8 can be written as 2 cube, so 3 into this, so it will be 4 x is equal to 1 upon 4. That's the solution of uh, this equation. Question number 8. You are given a figure. Figure 4 shows a sketch of part of the curve C with the equation y equals f of x where f of x is equal to 3x minus 2 whole square into x minus 4. Part A. Deduce the values of x for which f of x greater than 0. The question got one more. In part A, they want you to find the values of x for which the function is greater than 0. So, we already have the, the uh, figure given. So, you don't need to consider this function now. Let's look at the figure first. This is our cubic graph 3x minus 2 whole square into x minus 4. If you learn sketching cubic graph, you know for sure that this is the point where the curve has two repeated roots. For example, here the two roots are x is equal to 2 by 3 comma 2 by 3 repeated roots and x is equal to 4. So that tells us that this point is 2 upon 3 and this point is 4. So now they want you to find the values of x for which the function is greater than 0. When they say the function is greater than 0, you need to look at the graph and check where the graph is above x-axis because this part is where y will take all the positive values or f of x will take all the positive values. So the corresponding x values is our solution. So x values starting here all the way here. You take any value more than 4, your function will have a positive value positive y coordinate if you take any point. But is 4 included? No. When you substitute 4, the function becomes 0. But they are talking about greater than 0, not greater than or equal to 0. So the corresponding x value is x greater than 4. That's it. You don't need to do anything. Just look at the function, check where the function is greater than 0. So I will give you another scenario. Let's say the function is something like this. Let's say this is our given function f of x. This is our given function. The function has two roots, 1, 2 and 4. If they ask you to find the values of x for which f of x is greater than 0, you need to look at the graph and check where the curve goes above the x-axis. There are two segments, one here and another one here. So for this one, you can write x greater than 4. 
for this one in between these values between 1 and 2. So your solution will be 1 less than x less than 2. If x takes any of these values the function the value of the function will be positive or x can take anything more than 4 also. So there are two set of solutions and if you want to put it in the set bracket you can write it as x such that 1 less than x less than 2 union x such that x greater than 4. That's the solution for this graph. Part b expand f of x to the form ax cube plus bx squared plus cx plus d where a, b, c, d are integers to be formed. The question carries three marks. In part b they want you to expand this. So expand this using the algebraic identities a minus b whole square is a square minus 2ab which is 6 uh, 12x plus b square into x minus 4. Now take x, multiply everything and take minus 4, multiply everything and then simplify. That's your function. So when you take x, it will be 9x cubed minus 12x squared plus 4x. And take minus 4 and multiply. Minus 36x squared minus into minus plus 48x minus 16. And then simplify this 9x cubed minus 12 and minus 36 minus 48 x squared and 4 plus 48 is plus 52 x minus 16 that's our function they want you to write it in this form a x square a x cube plus b x square plus c x plus d where a b c d are integers that's it just remove the bracket and expand the line l also shown in figure figure 4 passes through the y-intercept of c and is parallel to x-axis. The line cuts c at p and q. Part c, using algebra and showing your working, find the length of pq, write your answer in the form k root of 3, where k is a constant. In part c, they want you to find this length pq, the length pq. So you need at least the x-coordinate of p and q, so you can find use the distance formula or if you know the x coordinates of p and q, you can take this x coordinate minus this. So you will be left with this length pq. So how do we find the x coordinate? This, we are, we are here talking about the point of intersection. So we equate both the function, the, the function, the cubic function and the straight line. But they say the line passes through the y-intercept of the curve. The curve, the equation of the curve is this. The y-intercept is minus 16 because when you put x is 0, your y is minus 16. So we know for sure this point is minus 16. So that tells us the equation of this straight line is y is equal to minus 16 because the line is parallel to x axis. So we have two equations two functions equate them to find the point of intersection. So when you equate them 9x cubed minus 48x squared plus 52x minus 16 is equal to minus 16. Here the equation is y is equal to minus 16. So you get this thing equals 0. Take x as a common factor out. 9x squared minus 48x plus 52 is 0. So your first value is x is equal to 0, that means this point, 0 comma minus 16. So we don't want this. We solve this quadratic equation, 9x square minus 48x plus 52 equals 0. When you solve, you will get two x coordinates, the x coordinate of P and Q. So take the bigger number as the x-coordinate of q, smaller one as the x-coordinate of p and subtract them, you get the length of pq. So my two x values are 8 plus 2 root 3 upon 3 and 8 minus 2 root 3 upon 3. So we got two x-coordinates, the x-coordinates of p and q. 
So when you check the decimal value of these two, this number is bigger than this. So that tells us the x coordinate of q is 8 plus 2 root 3 by 3. x coordinate of p, that means this length. This length is 8 plus 2 root 3 upon 3. The x coordinate of p is 8 minus 2 upon 3. This length is 8 minus 2 root 3 by 3. When you subtract them, you will be left with the length of PQ. So the length of PQ is the bigger number minus the smaller number. So put a 3 as a common term, common denominator, 8 plus 2 root 3 minus 8 minus 2 root 3. So your 8, 8 will be cancelled. You will have 2 root 3 plus 2 root 3 is 4 root 3 upon 3. But they want you to write the length in this form, k root 3. So you can write it as 4 upon 3 root 3, where k is 4 upon 3. So that's how you find the length pq. Question number 9, part 1. Find the integral 3x plus 2 whole square divided by 4 square root of x dx. Give your answer in simplest form. The question carries 5 marks. So question number 9 part 1, they want you to integrate this. Before we integrate, we expand this. So it will be a square plus 2ab which is 6, uh, 12x plus b square divided by 4x to the power half dx. And we split them. We divide each term by 4 to the power 4x to the power half. So it will be 9 upon 4 x to the power 2 divided by x to the power half. So you apply laws of indices. So it will be 2 minus half. Plus second term 12 divided by 4 x to the power 1 divided by x to the power half is x to the power 1 minus half plus 4 divided by 4 1 upon x to the power half which can be written as x to the power minus half dx. You can simplify further you can write it as 9 upon 4 x to the power 4 minus 1 3 by 2 12 by 4 is 3 x to the power minus half and here it will be uh, x to the power positive half actually 1 minus half is half 4 by 4 is 1 x to the power minus half dx now we can integrate this so 9 upon 4 when you integrate x to the power 3 by 2 x to the power 3 by 2 plus 1 upon x to the power 3 by 2 plus 1 upon 3 by 2 plus 1 plus 3 x to the power half plus 1 divided by half plus 1 plus x to the power minus half plus 1 by minus half plus 1 plus c and simplify this that's our final answer so 9 upon 4 x to the power 5 by 2 upon 5 by 2 plus 3x to the power 3 by 2 upon 3 by 2 plus x to the power half by x half plus c. That's it. So when we bring this, uh, put it as a reciprocal and simplify, you'll get 9, 9 by 4 times 2 by 5 when you put it upside down. So it will become 9 upon 10 x to the power 5 by 2. Here your 3 can be cancelled, 2 will go off. So 2x to the power 3 by 2. This is 2x uh, to the power half plus c. That's a simplified form. So expand this, put them separately, each term separately, divide each term by 4x to the power half, then integrate and simplify properly. So that's our final answer for part 1. Part 2. A curve C has equation y is equal to f of x. Given f dash of x equals x square plus ax plus b where a and b are constants. And the y-intercept of C is minus 8. 
the point P of 3 comma minus 2 lies on C and the gradient of C at the point P is 2. Find in simplest form f of x. The question carries 6 marks. Okay, here we are given f dash of x equals x squared plus ax plus b. They want you to find the actual function f of x. And we are given all this information. So we need to use all this information to find the a and b. And when you integrate, you will get another constant plus c also. So first, before we integrate, we can use this information, gradient of f of x, which is this. This is the gradient function because the first derivative of f of x is the gradient function. The value of gradient function at this point is 2. That means this gradient, the value of this gradient is 2 when x takes this value, x is equal to 3. So 9 plus 3a plus b. We need to read this carefully. Gradient of f of x, that means f dash of x, at the point p is 2. That means this is the gradient. This is the gradient 2 at this particular point. So you take the x coordinate substitute here. You can form an equation 3a plus b is equal to 2 minus 9. So we keep it there. Now, Integrate this function, when you integrate it, it becomes f of x, x square becomes x cube upon 3, ax becomes ax square upon 2, b becomes bx, and you need to add another constant c. So this is the actual function. We need to find the value of a, b, and c. So in this function, we have used this information already. And you are given y-intercept of this function is minus 8. Y-intercept means when you substitute x is equal to 0, this is your y-intercept. So you can straight away write c is equal to minus 8. Because when you replace x by 0, your c is equal to f of x, which is uh, minus 8. So we got c already. We need to find a and b now. So maybe we substitute c back in here. So our function is f of x is equal to x cube upon 3 plus ax square upon 2 plus bx minus 8. Now we are left with a and b. We already have one equation in a and b. If you can form another equation, we can solve the simultaneous equations. So we have used this information also. Now, you are given another information. This point P of 3 comma minus 2 is on the function, lies on the function. So take this point, substitute here. Substitute x by 3, y by minus 2 or f of x by minus 2. So you will get minus 2 is equal to x by 3. 3 cubed by 3 is 9. 27 by 3 is 9. Plus 3 squared by 2. 9a by 2 plus 3b minus a. So you can form another equation in a and b. It will be 9a upon 2 plus 3b equals, when you simplify 9 minus 8 is 1, 1 comes here minus 1, minus 3. That's all. We solve this simultaneous equation and find the value of a and b. Substitute a and b in this function f of x. That's our actual function. Now we are going to find a and b using these uh, two equations. Maybe we try to get rid of b. So we multiply this by 3 and subtract. That means equation 2 minus 3 times equation 1. So equation 2 is 9a upon 2 plus 3b minus 3 times the equation 1, 3a plus b, is equal to minus 3, the right hand side, minus 3 into minus 7. I'm just using the elimination method. You can use any method to find the value of a and b. So you will get uh, your 3b will be cancelled, 9a upon 2 minus 9a equals 
minus 3 plus 21 is 18. 21 minus 3 is 18. So simplify this or multiply everything by 2 or you can just simplify this 9 minus 18 is minus 9a upon 2 is 18. You can cancel this 2. So a is equal to minus 4. When a is minus 4, substitute here in any one of these equation, 3 times minus 4 plus b is equal to minus 7, b is equal to minus 7 plus 12 is 5. You got a and b, substitute a and b in the function, that's your actual function. So your actual function is f of x equals x cubed by 3 plus a x squared, a is minus 4. So minus 4x squared by 2 plus bx, bx is 5x minus 8. We can simplify this also, 4 upon 2 is 2. So you can write it as 2x squared. That's the actual function. So we have used all the information data given in the question to find the value of a, b and c.